Hello. Afternoon. We will wait for a few people to jump on. If you are re-watching this later on, say hi. Let me know if you've got any questions. Um, I'm sort of just, I know I'm early today. Normally we're not live until 3, 3.30, but it's been one of those really long days where I'm ready to go home. It's been quiet. We've seen one person all day. I've seen one person all day. There's just nothing happening. It is so wet and miserable outside. So I'm sort of at the point today where I just want to get these last few things done and then I can go home. Uh, but then I have to come back later tonight anyway because I've got a piece being picked up. So I thought, well, let's at least get this done and then I'll see how I'm feeling. I'm normally a bit energized after a live, so we will see. So I'll give it a second, wait for a few to jump on. We are using Purico Chalk Finish today in the colour Peppercorn. And we're going to be creating some really easy texture with it using a brush. And then we might bring in a bit of texture finish as well. So for those who don't know who I am, my name is Elise and I'm the owner and the artist behind the Painted Brush & Co. We're, we are in Bendigo, Victoria at 37 High Street and 37 High Street, Eagle Hawk, which is in Bendigo, Victoria. We're in a suburb. Um, and you can also find us online at thepaintedbrush.com.au. We stock the complete range. I can't open this jar. The, oh my God. The complete range of Pure Eco products, including their chalk finish, their silk finish, all their top coats, their waxes, everything. jar doesn't want to open. <laughs> I knew I should have opened it before I hopped on. Um, so I'm, I've been using the brand for a really long time. I absolutely love them. Um, and I'm a very big believer of you can't sell something if you don't truly love it. Um, and I'm also a big believer of selling what I use and what I love. And I wouldn't recommend something that I don't personally use. So Pure Eco is... Pure Eco is um, an amazing Australian brand and I back it 100%. I was their first stockist when they first opened up. Um, I'm now one of their biggest stockists and I just, I love the brand, I love the products. These jars, let me just show you what I'm doing. Uh, they've got like a vacuum sealed lid. The very first batch they did, didn't have that vacuum seal. And I got my very first order and a lot of the order had exploded and the lids leaked and it was just a bit of a mess. So then they started vacuuming, vacuum sealing all the jars and shipping now. I don't think, actually I think I've had one jar that has had an issue sending out to you guys. I do have a few jars still that come in a bit damaged but that's just because my couriers can be a little bit rough sometimes. Um, but ooh, since they fixed this, I, all of you guys receive your orders safe and sound. So it really does make a difference. It's a pain in the behind to get off, but once you break it free, it's good to go. All right, so we're gonna dive straight in. I've been dying to do this table. Um, this is a cedar hall table. The top, um, hang on, let me move the drawer. So it wasn't in great condition. I found it in an op shop. Um, it, it just, it was all right, but it wasn't, in my opinion, sellable as is. It was pretty rough. So the top has been sanded back to raw. My lovely husband sanded it. Uh, cedar is very, very common to see. Lots of little bits filled in. That's just the nature of the timber. So I have a, my husband sand at the top for me, which we will hemp oil, possibly wax. I'll decide when I come to it, which isn't today. Um, but all the rest of it, I have given it a really good clean, hot soapy water, scrubbed it. 
Um, it was pretty good. It was pretty well looked after in terms of cleanliness. It just needed a quick, quick clean. Then I have scruff sanded all over, which you can see. 80 grit sandpaper. Today I used, um, I think it's called Flexovit, I think. It's from Bunnings. They come in a roll. This is an 80 grit. It's really, really coarse. Um, I do normally use 80 grit, but this one is definitely a lot coarser than my usual 80 grits that I use. But it did the job. Scruff sanded all over. Uh, I focused on areas that would get knocked. The feet, these curves in the legs, up along here, and the draw front as well when I'm scruff sanding. Scruff sanding in these bits, I'm not too fast. Chalk finish is going to stick. I do like to give a scruff sand. It's just going to help that adhesion. But like these bits here, I'm not too fussed about. I know my paint's going to stick. But here, it's just nice to give that little bit more um, assurance that that paint's not going anywhere. So beautiful draw. I've actually done one of these hall tables back when I very first moved back to Bendigo. I've been to Bendigo, Melbourne, back again. Um, which was almost five years ago when I very first became a paint stockist and I did it in a green and I absolutely loved it. So I'm excited to do one again. I've always been on the, look, on the lookout for them, but I'm really excited that I finally found one. On a little side note, I wanted to show you this really cool handle. So just a normal looking handle, but have, I've never come across this before. It's got a little wooden screw. How cool is that? So that's a little bit of, that's a fun little thing. You never know with pieces. Like some of them have these quirky little things that I just think so cool. So I was going to replace the handle on this um, until I discovered that. So now this handle's going back on there. I think I'm actually just going to sand it uh, it looks like it's cedar as well. So I'm just going to sand it. It's going to take a little bit of finicky. Um, it's Sorry, it's a little bit finicky to do. Um, but I think it'll be well worth having that sanded handle on the drawer front with the timber top. It's a nice little attribute to the piece. And I think that's really cool. So this piece, it's a really simple, beautiful piece. Really nice curves on the legs. So I want to emphasize them i don't want to pull away from the beauty of the piece so we're going to be using pure eco chalk finish in the color peppercorn which is this really beautiful gray this is it in the silk so the silk's got the built-in top coat the chalk needs to be sealed so we're going to do it in the peppercorn but I want a little bit of texture. I'm not looking for loads. I just want a little bit so that when I wax it and I'm planning on using a black wax, possibly a little bit of white as well, I want it to catch on those. Um, just to give a little bit of detail because otherwise, even though it's got these really beautiful legs, it's quite a boring piece. Um, and to be honest, I've done a lot of really boring pieces at the moment where it's just a coat of paint um, or multiple coats of paint, lots of prep, but they're not my normal style. So I am dying to do something a little bit fun and a little bit interesting. Even though I really like the pieces I've been doing lately, they've all been a bit the same, same. So brand new jar. So the chalk finish has got the blue label and nice and full so this is a 200 ml jar they come in 200 and 600 ml uh, i'm just going to use the 200 ml i've opened the 200 ml uh simply because i don't have any pieces planned at the moment for the 600 and for me it'd just be a waste of paint so i'm going to go with the 200 i won't even use half this to get some really easy texture with chalk finish chalk finish is naturally very textured i'm sorry i'm getting so many notifications coming through <laughs> really easy texture use a natural bristle brush these ones are on my website they're five dollars each or maybe ten dollars i can't remember but natural bristle you can see 
These are our throwaway chip brushes. I normally use them for our hemp oil and for our rust finish. And you can see how rough they are. So I'm using this to get that little bit more texture. Um, if I use one of our normal synthetic brushes, you would just find that we wouldn't get as much. So one of these, we're going straight onto the leg. Now I am going to pull you a little bit closer if I can. It's such an awkward piece to show on camera. I normally prefer doing a solid piece for lives because I find this is quite hard to show. But that's not too bad. So here's our leg. You go and paint it just as normal, except as you're going, and you'll see as we go, whoops, helps if you can see what I'm doing. Just load up your brush as normal. So I like to sort of dunk it in, wipe it off on the sides a couple of times. And what that does, it gets that paint into the center bristles, which gives you a nicer finish. Go away, <laughs> too many notifications. So, a little bit of paint. And we're just, first coat, we are really just looking to get this on and get coverage happening. But at the same time, this is when we're going to start building some texture. So we're sort of just, whatever direction you like, a little bit haphazardly. I don't think that was the right word there, actually. <laughs> So I'm just looking to get that paint on there for the first coat. We will do two coats. I've got the heater blowing straight on us. I'm freezing today. It's really, really cold. So I have left the heater on. I apologize if Facebook's picking up all of that sound, but I'm way too cold to turn it off. So just like that, you can sort of see I'm going in every direction. And by doing that with this brush as well, that paint's sort of going to set in different directions. And being in a warmer environment as well can really help that paint settle and dry however you put it on. Whereas if it was cooler, or not super cool, but like normal temperature, you would find it would have more dry time, so it would definitely self settle itself just a little bit and you'd lose some of that texture. You could even, as you're going, if you really like what you've got happening, you could even come in and blast it with like a hairdryer and get it to dry really, really quickly and get some extra texture happening. This is not an easy piece to paint. There we go. I'll use the camera there a little bit. It's not an easy piece to show on camera. So we're just coming down. I'm sorry, we're going to move cameras a few times today. So you can see, even though I'm not painting it normally, you can see how amazing that coverage is. So I'm going to use a black or a white, or I think I'll use both, black and a white wax on this. I really like black wax over gray. I think it looks really nice. Um, and that's going to catch in all of those little bits of texture that we're building and it's going to give us a little bit more interest in the piece. Now if you want a lot more texture than what we're building with just this, you could come in, and I've prepared it, I'm prepared today, you could come in with Pure Eco Texture Finish which just mixes in to the chalk finish paint you can use it with silk, but it doesn't work very well because silk has that um, self-settling uh, ingredient in it that helps it smooth itself out, which we obviously don't want when we're trying to build more texture. So you just mix some of that until you get the thickness that you're after. And then you can get some really cool texture. I have done a few videos on it. If you jump on my website under texture finish, they're all linked. Or jump straight onto our YouTube as well, which is just the Painter Brush & Co. If you search the Painter Brush & Co on YouTube, you will find um, all of our videos. And they're now letting us put up shorts as well, which is all those little snippet videos that I've been doing. Um, I normally post them to our Instagram Reels, but I discovered the other day 
that we can post them to YouTube as well. And they do really well on YouTube. So I'm definitely making quite the effort to make sure all of our little snippet videos going up there as well. And they're a really fun way to quickly show a product as well. So I really enjoy doing the short videos. Long videos are fun, but there's a lot more editing to them. So I'm just really stippling that on a little bit and then just brushing it out just a little bit, just to sort of smooth some of that stipple. I don't want it just to look like stippled paint. All right. Bring you in. Here we go. I need a camera person, don't I? I really do. I think it would make my life much easier. I'm just going to get these couple of bits on this other leg that I missed because I couldn't see it. So, and as always, first coat, we're just looking to get the paint on there. Chalk finish dries really, really fast. I don't think I'm even going to have to hit this with a hairdryer today, to be honest, between coats. I reckon we might be able to get all the coats on in one go. All right, I'm gonna be quiet for a minute because my throat's hurting from all my yammering. I had an hour long phone call before this, so I'm a bit <laughs> talked out. So I'm gonna be quiet and let you just sort of enjoy the process. If you've got any questions, let me know. And I don't mind my paint being a bit thicker as well because that also helps build some of that texture. So for those who just joined, this is Pure Eco Chalk Finish in the colour Peppercorn. piece as well um, that way if I get any paint on that raw timber it sands off really easily whereas if I'd already sealed the top I'd actually be sanding off that sealer um, or the stain so I always paint first it just makes it that little bit easier to get a nice finish but I'm just building some texture. I always do the backs of pool tables as well. Um, that way they can be used in any part of the house. Most pieces though, other than like pool tables, I really don't do the backs off. I 
you that that's a question that I get asked a lot. And it really depends on the piece and what the piece will be used as. I need like a wheelie in there. <laughs> yeah, it's absolute pain. Such an awkward piece. Let's touch up those finger marks now. Let me touch it just there. Thank you all for watching. We're just creating some texture with Puri Coat Chalk Finish and a natural bristle brush. You can use any brush you like, but I do like a natural bristle for this technique. I find that I just get that little bit more texture. Otherwise, even just like a really old ratty brush that has seen better days can work really well as well. And I'm just painting in any direction and doing a bit of splodging as well. I call it splodging. I don't know what else you'd call it, but splodging it is today. <laughs> and you can see, this is a 200ml jar. I have used very little paint. So we'll do two coats of this. And two coats is also going to help us build up that texture a little bit more. Um, if you don't want to build up too much, you could always paint your first coat as normal and then just do this for your second coat as well. I chose this colour because I wanted to keep this piece quite placid still. I didn't want to pull away from the piece. So whenever I'm selecting a specialty finish like this, I want to make sure, well for me, I just want to make sure whatever I'm doing complements the piece. I don't want to go complete opposite direction because for me it just sort of ruins it a little bit and it just pulls away. Um, our area here as well in vinegar, we're quite conservative um, in terms of what people like to buy so something that's really loud and really out there doesn't necessarily do that well um, and unfortunately the amount of time it would take the supplies and the time etc can really impact on the cost so I couldn't ask 500 plus for this whole table if I did something really fancy with it so something like this I can get about 300 for so that's always a consideration for me as well, is the cost and the time taken and what I can get back out of the piece. At the end of the day, I am a business and I need to be making sure that I can make a few dollars while still really enjoying myself. I'm not here to turn pieces out. Um, I'm not, I don't like factory finish, spraying everything. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's just me. I'm definitely a hand painter. I like to take my time, and if I'm not enjoying it, there's no point in me being here. So this is like a nice little palette reset for me. I've done a lot. I've done a white, and yeah, it's pretty much white. A white whole table, then I did the green sideboard that I posted last night. Um, I did a blue set of drawers, which did have some stenciling, which was nice. But they are still pretty simple straightforward finishes they all complemented the pieces beautifully I'm really proud of all those pieces but for me it's a bit boring and I'm not here to do that sort of finish so I do like to have a bit of fun so this for me is very enjoyable and just gets me gets me motivated again 
I do have a piece coming up. I'm not going to tell you what it is that I'm super, super excited about. If, it, if I can pull it off, <laughs> um, which I'm hoping to do in the next month or so, or start doing in the next month or so. I think it's going to be a couple of months. It's a bit finicky, very different to what I've previously done as well. So I need these artistic pieces to sort of keep me motivated, keep me enjoying it. And it's really important to me that I enjoy what I do. Um, and running a business where I'm doing everything, I need this artistic release to sort of keep in good spirits as well. Otherwise, I definitely get a bit blah and just I don't enjoy life or what I'm doing and I need to be able to enjoy this while I support my family. That's really important to me. So I really enjoy pieces like this. I don't get to do them as much as what I like. Although this week I have done a lot more pieces. I've had one, two, three pieces plus that one last week. It's been a very busy week. So this is a nice end to it for me. Alright, we've just got the front to do. I'm just watching to see how the rest of this dries. Um, it's drying really well. So we'll hit it. We'll finish this front bit. And then we're going to hit it with a hairdryer just to speed it up so we can do the second coat today as well. And then we'll see how we're going. I won't be able to wax it today. I do like to give pieces at the very least overnight. You don't necessarily have to, but I do like to give pieces overnight just to make sure they're dry before we go in and wax. There's no point in trying to wax a piece that's still got wet paint or where the paint's still wet underneath. Um, it's just going to ruin your finish. Your paint's going to come off. Um, it's not going to dry properly. It's just not that great. Did you start early? Yes, I did, Julie. Sorry. I know I told you that I was starting at like 3, 3.30. But it's been very quiet. We've only seen Christy today. I haven't seen a single other person. And some days are like that. It's a quiet time of the year anyway. It was like this last year when I first opened as well. It was quite scary when I first opened because I didn't know what to expect. But we opened during winter last year. I've just missed half this leg off, I noticed. Um, so there are quiet days, but now I know what to expect. We're still having good months, but it's, <laughs> it gets a bit boring when you don't see anyone all day. All right, let's turn this and get the front done. for a life. This is peppercorn in chalk finish. Okay. It's a really, really nice colour. It's a very earthy grey. Um, if you want to go a little bit lighter but still have that earthiness, go for iron bark. Um, iron bark's a real, really earthy grey. A um, little bit lighter than this and still got that nice, that sentence isn't a very good sentence, but it's got that real greyness to it without being washed out or blue. I've been wanting to use this colour since it came in. This is part of the last release. It's not quite new anymore. We're about four months in, I think, but part of the last release that we had. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm always happy to help. For this trim, can you guys see? For this trim along here, underneath the top, I always paint that. And then what I do before I actually do the top, I just run a bit of sandpaper right along that edge and just clean up any pieces that have actually gone over to the top. I just think it looks nicer. When you turn the piece over, because most of the times pieces are turned over to be put into a car. So I just think it looks that little bit nicer as well. A 
and I always take drawers out as well. I don't take doors off very often, but drawers always come out. I never paint drawers in um, because they like to get stuck and trying to unstick a drawer that is stuck, it's incredibly painful <laughs> and just not worth the effort. All right, and so for the drawer front, I should have done the drawer front first actually, so you can really see what I'm doing. So let me bring it nice, and actually, let me save myself some effort here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about the easy way. <laughs> all right, here's our drawer front. So we have sanded, cleaned really well. Um, just to make sure it's all cleaned up. I'll answer your question in a moment, Kay. We've got a little bit of paint on our brush, not much. This is our chip brush. And all I'm doing, sort of patting it on, brushing in any direction, and we're just looking to get that paint on there and to create a bit of texture. I sort of like to pat more of it on and go in different directions when you're patting as well and then just sort of brushing. Let me see if I can get, can you see that? Oh, there we go. So some of that will vanish as it dries, it will settle itself. But if I blasted that with a hairdryer now, it would pretty much stay where it's at. But we'll go in and do a second coat as well, doing the exact same thing. And that's going to build a second layer of texture. Now I'm just gonna come for the sides of drawers. This one's actually quite a tight fit. Normally I tape across the bottom here. This one I'm not going to. I'm just gonna make sure I've got a nice clean line and I can come back and give that a light little sand if I want to. This drawer's just a little bit tight. So I'm not going to do that. I'm also not going to build any texture here on the top. I just want a nice, clean paint job on the top. Remembering that I just touched that wet paint with my bum. I always do that. Oh, and now I'm going to trip over it. Um, you don't want to add too much paint or any texture to the sides of your drawers because all of that is going to add millimetres to the actual edge um, and then your drawer becomes really, really hard to fit into that um, spot that it's got to go in. So don't add too much paint. Always keep a nice clean line and use as little paint as you can. If your drawers are really, really tight and you want, and the sides aren't looking great, you want to do something with them, you can just stain them as well because the stain soaks into the timber. Otherwise, you could just oil or wax them as well. <laughs> no, I do it all the time. I always walk into a piece. I don't think there's a single piece that I haven't walked into at some point. Now, uh, Kay asked... Do I paint the bottom of the table? No, I don't, but let me bring you over and tip you down. So I don't paint in here. I don't paint here. I do make sure it's clean and tidy. I do, however, paint this bit along here just to make sure, just to keep it looking nice. Um, and I find it's easier to paint that than to spend ages going back and sanding it and making sure it's not a nice clean line. So I just, it's just for presentation. The piece is gonna be flipped upside down. Painting the actual underside, I think is a complete waste of paint. I don't think there's any point to that at all. But I think just painting these little edges, is just a nice little finishing touch as well. And it does make a little bit of a difference as well. And I'm not looking for texture or anything. Oh, I hope missed a whole section there. Not looking to add texture there. I'm just looking to get an, ooh, a nice clean line. Oh, that's my toe. So again, just along the back. And I'm also getting that front lip as well that I showed you just a moment ago. It's just presentation worthy. It's not doing anything. You're not gonna see it in any photos. Unless somebody's sitting on the ground, they're not gonna see it. But it really, it just makes it look nice. 
I've never had somebody complain, but you never know. You never know. Good friend of mine had somebody complain the other day that the back of her piece wasn't painted. And the back of the piece was perfect condition, but the back of the piece hasn't been painted. And she's painted, she's probably painted more pieces than what I've painted. Never had that request. And this customer complained after they brought it that it hadn't been painted. So you just never know. So I like to keep things clean and tidy. If somebody wants the back of a piece or the underside painted for whatever reason, I'm always happy to do it, but it's more paint. So there is always costs involved with these things, but sometimes if it's just a little area, I'll just do it anyway. It really depends on the piece as well. Um, if I've got a piece that I'm planning to put in my window, um, I will either paint the back of it or I will put a new back on it. Um, if it's not in the greatest condition, just so that it looks nice in the store. And you never know, the sideboard that I just finished, I put a new back on it, it looked a bit yuck. I think it was stuck to a wall, possibly, um, at some point in its life, because it had all the old glue on it. So we got off what we could, and then we stuck a nice new sheet of MDF on it, just to make it look neat and tidy. And that's all it is, it's just preferences. If you're painting for yourself, if I was painting this for myself, I wouldn't bother with any of that, to be perfectly honest. But as a business and as an artist, I do like to present my pieces nicely as well. So it's all a bit whatever you feel like, really. Now, we are going to have a little bit of noise for a second. As I said earlier, I've got, oh, that's the wrong hair I have got the heater pretty much blowing straight on it because I'm freezing. But, oh, I've also got a hair dryer. I'm just going to hit it just a little bit. Um, anywhere where I can see the paint's wet. Uh, chalk finish is really, really easy to see when it's wet because it is obviously shiny compared to the dried chalk finish. Silk finish is a little bit harder to tell because the silk has that bit of sheen in it anyway. But, yeah. Hit it with some light is normally the easiest way or do what I do and touch it and then realise that it's still wet. All right, so just for a second, I'm just going to hit the areas that I can see a wet. dry really fast. Chalk is normally dry within about half an hour but can take up to about two hours if it's a bit cool um, but when it's warm uh, it does dry really really fast but heating it with the hairdryer just speeds it up a little bit. Normally I don't bother, normally I just walk away and come back but because we're live we'll get it dried a little bit faster. Now there was a question why am I using chalk and not silk? I actually prefer chalk. Um, I love the finish that I can get with it. 
I really like the naturalness of it as well. I feel like it looks very natural and on a piece like this, I feel like adding silk would just pull away from the beauty of the piece and the age of the piece. Um, I think silk can sometimes, because of that shine, can sometimes look a little bit too manufactured. Um, even though I do really, really like it, sometimes I definitely just prefer the chalk. Um, and for this, when I'm adding texture, chalk is how I'm gonna get that texture. I cannot get this finish with silk finish. I can get some, but nothing. Uh, silk, you can pretty much paint in whatever direction you want. And if it's a nice temperature and um, you are using a good quality brush and doing it fairly quickly and not overworking the paint, you will still get a smooth finish. Whereas chalk, it loves texture. And using a natural bristle brush, we're just emphasizing it. So I'm using chalk because I get that texture and because I think it complements the piece. Silk, I honestly just, I couldn't do it to this piece. I think it deserves chalk. I like how natural it looks with a wax over it as well. I love how it feels with a wax. Whereas silk, it's got that bit of shine, and although it does look like it's been waxed, um, I just feel like it's not the right finish for this piece. I am definitely all for chalk. I don't use silk as often as what it looks at the moment. I've been trying to use it a little bit more. Um, silk is our most popular paint. I sell two silk to every chalk easily, if not three to four silk to every chalk. Um, so I try to use silk to show you guys how to use it and the finishes that you can create and to demonstrate it. But chalk will always be my first love. Um, I can't, I, I just love it. I really, really do. It's a really beautiful paint. Um, in terms of prep, it's about the same silk. You need to use the basin blocker or a primer with it. The chalk you don't, but the chalk has to be sealed, the silk doesn't. So in terms of cost, the amount of effort you have to put in, the amount of product you have to put in, um, the coats and the finishing, it's about even anyway. So I'm just gonna go for the chalk and get the finish that I really, really want versus the silk. I hope that answers your question. Um, but let me know if you've got any others. All right, so we're nice and dry. Let's come in and do our second coat. Oh. All right, so, oh, <laughs> oh nearly lost it. And now, because I'm standing in front of the heater, I am actually quite hot. All right, so you can see, got lots of bits that aren't really filled in. So now we're gonna come in and you can't even on the camera, mm, no, camera you really can't see it. Even to the naked eye, you can't really see the texture. I can certainly feel it. Um, but once we wax this, that's when you're really going to start to feel it. So you don't have to go all over with the second coat for this finish. I just wanna make sure any bits that I haven't already caught with the first coat, are filled in and that's really what we're going for. You can see how amazing the coverage already is. If I was painting this normally, I'd probably only be doing a couple of touch-ups, to be honest. Um, I certainly wouldn't be doing this extent. It's got amazing coverage. And I'm just sort of watching it on to begin with just because the few bits where it hasn't, and I know you guys can't see it that well, it's where there's a bit of texture in the actual piece. So I just wanna get that paint in to all those little nooks and crannies. And blotching it on is a really easy way to do that. Wiping over the paint as it's drying as well will also build some beautiful texture. there that I missed. Let's get that bit down in there. Beautiful. Look at that. And 
So I'm just trying to fill in those gaps more than anything, really. Let's move the camera back a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So again, just trying to get all those bits filled in. And that texture underneath in that first coat will also come through as well. So even if I painted this on fairly smoothly, you'd still see some of that texture. So you can sort of reduce it a bit. If you decide that you don't like the texture that you're getting, chalk is also incredibly easy to sand. And um, sand, really fine sandpaper, and you can get a really beautiful soft finish that just feels and looks amazing as well. It's a very versatile paint. <laughs> Silk you can sand between coats, but chalk is definitely the easier of the two when it comes to getting a really, oh, hang on, that wasn't a very good sentence because silky do get a brush free, brush stroke free finish just about, but chalk, you can definitely achieve it as well. Also use chalk if you're looking to create, if you're looking for a different finish other than that sort of slight shine that you get with silk. Chalk's a really great opportunity to go on with a top coat. You could go on with the glaze. You can use the glaze or top coats over silk as well, but they do go beautifully over the silk. You can also go in with any of our waxes, which we'll be doing. Not today, but we will, I will be doing. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to go live and do it because I will just want to get it done tomorrow, but we'll see. We'll see how busy tomorrow is. I might even go live tomorrow afternoon. We'll see how tired I am by that point. Um, so yeah, you've got the waxes, any of the waxes. You can go in with stain glaze, you can go in with hemp oil as well. Hemp oil over chalk finish is absolutely beautiful. It's incredibly durable and it also gives you that really nice natural finish that you can get with the wax. Just go across and make sure I fill in that underside lip of the top as well. Make sure it's all covered. And while I'm in a different position, legs are always hard to do, but while I'm in a different position as well, I'll just make sure that I get any bits that I've really missed. The black wax will sink into all those little crevices as well, as will the white wax. Um, so you will find some of that will just sort of hide anyway. So you don't have to be super pedantic, but you still want to get most of it. It will just give you that nicer overall finish. I'm already sick of turning this table. <laughs> It's just a little bit, a dolly would just make it a bit too low, so like this it is. If you want to see the waxing of this piece, let me know. I'll probably film it anyway, but if you would really like to see it live, um, I, can, I can do that tomorrow. So just let me know in the comments if you would really like to see it, um, because I can do that. And if any of my locals would like to see it in person, let me know. And um, I can do a little bit in person for you as well to really show you how it happens. I'm always happy to paint in store for you guys and show you different products and techniques as well. Um, so just let me know if there's anything that you'd like to see because I am happy to show just about everything. There's no gatekeeping here. I literally share everything. It's 
again, I don't have to fill in all of these gaps on the back. Sorry, I'm filling in all the gaps, but I don't have to put a full coat over. It's just not necessary. It would be a waste of paint to do like a full coat when I can just fill in all those little gaps. I'm still getting the same look of the finish. So when I flip this up, and I will flip it up upright as well before I do the live tomorrow, I'll probably do it just after this actually, just to make sure because I can't see underneath all those grooves, just to make sure that I've got more because I always miss somewhere. So having it upside down is definitely the easier way to go, but when I'm done, just flipping it upright definitely makes my life that little bit easier just to make sure we get anywhere that we've missed. You want to be pretty random with your <laughs> brush strokes as well. Otherwise you'll find that it's just a bit too consistent. And this is why we walk around our faces as well, so you can always get to this, because you will miss this. All those bits you don't see otherwise, and you realise afterwards. I'll just get the back of this leg. No, if I'm doing a normal paint job, I would be walking around the table as I go, um, making sure that I'm catching any of these bits straight away when the paint's fresh and filling them in rather than just sort of doing it as I go um, with this because this we're adding the texture so it doesn't matter. But if we're doing a normal paint job, we want to be making sure that we catch all those bits straight away so that we don't have, so we're not building that extra texture that we don't want. We're on to the last leg. So two coats. Greys and blacks are always really good with coverage. I'm, I'm always surprised if it takes more than that, but these colours are fantastic. They've got loads of pigment in them. So we do achieve really great coverage really quickly. And you can always touch up if you want to. If you are going to do any touch-ups, you need to do them before you wax. Wax is always last. But we'll do a live tomorrow. There's a couple of you asking. Um, so we will do a live tomorrow waxing it. And we'll discuss wax. Then I haven't really done a live on wax in a while. I think it's been quite some time actually. So it's probably a good time to do one. And we'll discuss waxes and the differences there. And what to do when. What am I doing with the top? The top's beautiful, so it's cedar, and I'm planning on either waxing it or hemp oil. I just want to keep that really nice timber. So that's the plan. Um, it will be quite similar to the green rainforest sideboard that I finished last night, that I posted last night. Um, and I think I've posted a couple little videos of it today as well. So it will be very similar to that. That's also cedar. 
So we'll get that nice colouring as well, which I think will be really, really beautiful with the grey. Always make sure you get those little corners. There's nothing worse than realising that you've missed one. to go. Hang on, I'm going to have to turn the whole thing to do this last bit. <laughs> brush and bring you in okay. just got the front bit to go so as always I'll pop this up on my YouTube at some point um, I'll see I don't know what time it is I do have to hang around for a bit so I might do that shortly anyway for you all so you can I find it's way easier to rewatch our lives on YouTube uh, Facebook is not friends with us at all these days and likes to hide a lot of our posts and our videos um so unless you scroll through our feed for ages they, they can be quite hard to find particularly if you're on a phone as well on the computer it's a little bit simpler still thankfully but we do our lives here on facebook because our instagram we haven't tried them on Instagram, but Instagram lives generally don't do as well from what I've seen. So we'll stick with Facebook for the moment. All right. So we're looking very pretty in grey. Let's do our draw front and then we're done for today. So our draw front's dried. Let me turn you off a little bit so you can see what we're doing. Let me try and get it to capture some light. I don't think it's going to catch the light now. There's really not much sun coming in. I don't think you guys can see that at all. Even if I hold it. Oh, you can see a little bit. I know. It's so hard to show things like this, but there's a bit of texture happening. Again, if you really want more texture, go in with the texture finish, which just mixes with the paint. Um, but for what we're after here, this is fine. Bring you in. I also like this because you can paint with your left hand and it's okay. So having that paint that little bit thicker there does not hurt at all. a piece of hair. I always get a piece of hair in these things. Beautiful. So again, I'm just going to very carefully wipe down that top edge and the bottom edge with just a very small amount of paint just to clean them up and make sure they're nice and neat. And chalk finish does sand really, really easy. So if I get it somewhere I don't want it, it's super easy to remove all right now i've got some wet paint on there let me see if i can show you now oh yes there you go you can see that texture coming through underneath as well so now i'm just going to let this dry i do like to let my pieces dry overnight before i wax them just to make sure they're 100 percent oh oh i need to move this because i'm going to keep walking into it just make sure they're 100 percent let them dry um there's, it's just best for the paint. You want to make sure that that paint is nice and fully dry before you wax. Otherwise, you're locking in wet paint um, and your paint can also come off really easily as well. When we're waxing, we're normally applying it with a similar brush to what we've just used and we're also buffing it. So we're really working over that surface quite a, quite a lot. 
Um, so if that paint is even that little bit wet underneath, it will just come off. Um, and obviously we don't want to ruin our finish, um, our paint finish that we've worked so hard on. So always make sure it's 100% dry, minimum two to four hours, but ideally overnight. I recommend waiting overnight. It's just, it will give you a nicer finish, 100%. So I will see you all either tomorrow morning about nine o'clock or tomorrow afternoon we finish at 1, so 1, 1 ish And we will do another live and we will wax this piece. Okay? Um, but for now, enjoy your Friday night. Make sure you check out our YouTube as well. It's just the Painter Brush & Co. All of our products that we've used today are also on our website. The brush is our natural chip brush. And it's peppercorn in chalk finish. I have got a 600ml peppercorn left. Um, I've got it in silk. And I've got heaps of chip brushes because I just got an order this week. Have a lovely Friday night and I will see you all tomorrow.